amidst the shadows of unknowable deities. We humans are a dim and briefly present spark in a sea of cosmic entropy. We believe our lives consequential, and our years fulfilled with the utmost significance. Yet, we all find ourselves shirking away from the fate we will all inevitably be subjected to. After this unavoidable end, what footprints will we have left behind? What real substance do our short lives have on a cosmic scale, or in the face of those who rule over the threads of reality itself? Are we truly nothing more than potential servants, victims to be toyed with? An end felt breeze drifting through infinite space? It is mankind's nature to attempt to find meaning for itself, and to be left with such hollow and dour of conclusions, we cannot feel very disenfranchised and truly alone. We are but faint embers set alight from a massive fire, far beyond the significance of our self postulated import. We will either be fortunate enough to naturally fade away peacefully, or be unnoticeably stamped out beneath the hooves of the terrible beings which lie between the fabric of existence. Yet, regardless of which end we find ourselves subjected to, there is a being of entropic might and unending benevolence who would give us meaning far beyond our current modes of understanding. Amidst his shadowy embrace, we become a part of something greater, unending, and fantastically powerful. The one which will save us from our mortal vulnerability and astral insignificance is the great old one, Mordigian, the king of ghouls and god of cannibalism. To best understand Mordigian, we should first examine those who have come to serve him and be embraced as his children. It is from this mortal rung that our minds can grasp easily and begin the ascension from our earthly existence to that of the great charnel god. To seek out these servants of Mordigian, we must dive into the places where most of us will lie until the end of our days. Within dark crypts, graveyards, and mausoleums, their cackling could be heard, along with the sickening gnashing of teeth and the wet slump of bloody flesh. These beings are known to us as ghouls. It is amidst these rancid breeds of degenerates that the worship of Mordigian is most prevalent. These creatures nourish themselves by feeding on the bodies of the dead. And as graveyards mysteriously become more and more empty, nocturnal sightings of these ghastly wretches dramatically increase. Though perhaps it is wrong of me to refer to these beings so abhorrently. These ghouls actually originate from our very own species, though their means of transformation from human to ghoul take several variations. The first mode of de-evolution, or perhaps evolution, lies within the simple fact that excessive corpse-eating transforms one in ways modern science cannot yet understand. Though we hear cases of cannibalism in some survival stories, acts of murder, and cultic practices, the effects of flesh eating are greatly expedited by the incredible number of bodies these beings feast upon, as well as their total and constant immersion within their cryptic environments. Eyes become larger and more suited for the total darkness that they crawl about and their noses become more sensitive to the scents that come along with the dead. They form long snouts adapted to nuzzle deeper within carcasses, and develop razor-like teeth in consequence to the carnivorous scavenging. In the second mode of transformation, these adaptations can occur instantly. Mordigian himself can bestow these gifts to disciples who have proven their loyalty through the complexities of a rigorous ritual. The recipient of these blessings will succumb to death itself, and be brought back in the form of the revered ghouls of the charnel god. The last method is similar to the first, though it can be performed in such a way that the subject can lie somewhere between man and ghoul. Though an extremely rare occurrence, sometimes ghouls will steal away newborns from their homes and bring them back to their grips. They then raise them in such a way that they can fit into both societies and serve as sentinels and informants amidst the top side of society. Often these types are the ones left with the task of bringing in new followers of Mordigian and serve as liaisons between human and ghoul. While these corpse eaters are a startling sight, they are actually fairly harmless to the living, will more often than not scurry away at the first sign of discovery. Only by intentionally trespassing or defiling their holy sanctuaries in Mordigian do these beings turn hostile. 
and given the scarcity and secrecy of these societies, these happenings are truly very rare. Mordigian's position as a great old one, as opposed to an outer god, is greatly debated, but it's safe to assume that anywhere death or entropy takes place, Mordigian has a strong influence and reign of power. In consequence, Mordigian is likely old as death itself, and there are several, yet very vague accounts, regarding the cult and himself functioning within our society today and within the past. While the origins of the secret religion are not known to us, the cult of Mordigian is believed to have experienced its greatest growth beneath the catacombs of Paris. Dating all the way back to the 5th century under the rule of the Roman Empire, and containing at an estimate of 6 million people's remains, it is no surprise that the charnel god found this a suitable stronghold for his religion. Despite the abundance of death to nourish him, and the cryptic quarters for his followers, Mordigian would not sit idly by. Traveling and manifesting himself across the world, he would additionally establish followers within the continents of North America, South America, Africa, and Asia. Mordigian is believed to currently hold the greatest influence of manner manifestation within Egypt, consuming the corpses that lie beneath the land's pyramids and undiscovered tombs. While the cannibal cults surrounding the charnel god are largely cohesive and non-quarreling lot, there has been a relatively recent schism that has caused a small but nevertheless significant rift within Mordigian's followers. In 1804, a Bengali follower named Dagagabri claimed that in order for ghouls to assume their ultimate form of evolution, they must consume Mordigian himself. How or why this unspeakable act would occur is not known to the outside world, but the vast majority of followers of Mordigian hold the utmost contempt for this view and believe it is an unspeakable heresy. Besides these facts, there is little to nothing else we can pull regarding Mordigian within the past or within current affairs. However, thanks to the immense power of such beings and their whispers to us outside of time, there is still more to be learned. What we primarily know of Mordigian is pulled from a time far in the distant future, within a post-apocalyptic city called Zulbalser, located on the landmass of Zothik, which is also known as Mandalas Continent. These details have probably been passed to us by the will of Mordigian himself, likely through his ghoulish followers or the supposed ramblings of an apparent madman. As such, these details are considered factual by those who follow the great charnel god. How a world becomes so radically changed is not known to us, but as Mordigian is the king of entropy and death, this future state of the world serves as the perfect throne for his rule, and it is likely within this time that he is most powerful. In this faraway time, Mordigian manifests himself under the Black Temple Crypt of Zulbalser, and in consequence, those who take residence within the city hold Mordigian with the highest regard and respect. Whoever dies with the confines of the city, whether a citizen or not, is carried to these crypts by a company of priests in purple. These robed beings show no skin and wear a silver mask in the likeness of a dour skull. Amidst the living, these priests have a special authority and the procession is not to be hindered nor stopped. Only they are permitted to lay eyes on the Lord of Death and in consequence must also hide away their skin forever within their ghastly uniform. Finally, approaching the corpses beneath his temple crypt, Mordigian manifests himself as a great black corpse worm, or a shade-like wraith, and after the required rituals, consumes the bodies of the dead within his shadowy embrace. The charnel god's hunger is unquenchable. He is never satiated and leaves nothing of these bodies remaining. After hearing how Mordigian operates, and the manner in which his closest followers live, it is very likely that one would have a very fearful and negative view of this entity. However, the majority of people who live within Zolbalser were normal humans outside of the realm of death and their admiration for Mordigian, and the city itself is one foreigners often find both welcoming and thriving. Despite his total domination over the deceased, Mordigian is a fair and just god who protects both the living and the dead from violence 
and from unsanctioned acts of careless necromancy. He has been known to kill off cult leaders who bring harm onto their followers, and has consumed those who have attempted to defile his people's resting place. He has no wish to begin consuming the living, for he knows he holds uncontested court over the dead. He is the final destination for our earthly existence, and the quintessential mode of release from our mortal arrogance. All who succumb to death's embrace will become the supplicant of Mordigian. When life on earth one day finally ceases, the charnel god will consume all our remnants and bring meaning to our final rest, carrying us on within him. For in death we come under his domain, and through his domain we become that which nourishes him.